Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our RimWorld Star Wars Let's Play. And the plague has passed for the most part. Uh, there are still plenty of people that are dealing with it. However, just about everybody is either immune at this point or is on the verge of immunity. The only character that we have really any concern for uh, at this point is going to be Salt, who, uh, as you may recall, was a little bit late getting treated. And so she's still a bit behind. She's at almost 50% immunity, but 64% plague. So we'll have to keep a very close on, eye on her, but she is getting um, full full medicine uh, treatments rather than, you know, no medicine or herbal medicine. And she is in, um, well, she is in a hospital bed. Granted, she's not in the best one. Uh, this is just normal quality. These are better. But the immunity gain speed is 116%, so she's going to be gaining immunity a lot faster than she would be in just a regular old bed. How much better is it in this one? 116. So in that case, it makes no difference. I think she'll be fine. Everybody else is okay, though. I think, like, Lynn, for example, is yeah 99%, so she'll be okay. Keel... 98. Um, I was a bit concerned with Deleuze as well. Yeah, that got pretty high up there at 82, but it looks like she will be fine at 91%. And eventually, I think we're going to need to treat her back, because that is giving her problems. Mm, I haven't decided what I want to do about that yet. Anyway, I was having a thought while kind of setting up to record, and since we're doing all sorts of genetic stuff in this playthrough... And in Star Wars, the force, or at least force sensitivity, does seem to be um, somewhat genetic in nature. It is sort of inherited, you know, through, from like uh, parents to their children and whatnot. So I was thinking maybe in our genetics research, trying to do something with force sensitivity as well. Now, I don't know if we'd actually be able to make it a game mechanic because the genetics mod uh, is separate from the Star Wars mod, and so I don't think I could create dependencies between the two. I mean, it, it might be possible, but we might just have to kind of roleplay it a little bit. But I think it would be cool to try to come up with a way to create force sensitive characters uh, for super soldiers. So, for example, um, you know, putting some sort of tissue in Pathfinder that would give him force sensitivity. Now, <clears throat> what I was thinking for that is we have uh, genetic extraction tables, for example, and we have to, you know, say extract genes from a bear or a muffalo to get those properties. Uh, we can also extract genes from a humanoid. So what I was thinking is that we would find a force sensitive humanoid, and I do believe that they need to be dead or at least they will be dead once we extract the genes. I don't think there's a way to extract genes from a living specimen and have it continue living, at least that I'm aware of. It, it might be possible. But anyways, if we killed somebody who was Force-sensitive and extracted their genes and then used that to make some sort of tissue, uh, it really doesn't matter what, because again, we're role-playing this more than actually doing it, but, you know, we could say... Um... I don't know. Uh, I don't know that one would be better than any of the others, but uh, we would create some sort of um, genetic, genetically engineered tissue with it and then inject it in Pathfinder. And that tissue would stimulate like midichlorian growth in his body or something and make him force sensitive. So I was kind of toying with that idea. Let me know what you guys think, but I felt like it fit our whole genetics and super soldier research thing quite well. I don't want to just make everybody force sensitive because that would make things um, really unfair. It would make things really easy and also uh, kind of take away from the mystique of the force and how special those characters are. But I think it would be cool to play with that idea a little bit. So uh, again, let me know what you guys think regarding that. So. Let's see, everybody's being treated. Uh, who's having a mental break? Mara, our prisoner. I mean, that's fine. How are you doing, Mara? Uh, okay. 
She hasn't been treated, but it looks like she'll be fine. 94%. It would be really, really unlucky if the plague managed to catch up, but I can't see that happening. That would be insanely bad luck. Alright, uh, I've queued up some smoothing of the floors in this area. I've also gone ahead and forbidden these doors so that our colonists will navigate through the halls instead, because now that they have an easier access point uh, to this area, there's no need to go outside. At least not for that. Uh, power is okay right now. I have gone ahead and unforbidden a few more of the uh, solar generators. And again, I am going to start removing a few over here. Is this just a random polar bear? Huh. Okay, where did you come from, Mr. Polar Bear? Boss, I'm going to need you. Where is uh, Heth? Let's see. I'm going to let him finish eating, but as soon as Heth is done eating, I'm going to send him down here to deal with this polar bear because it can be... Uh, very dangerous to have wild animals wandering near our base. Hydroponics basin is broken down. Alright, Heth. I need you to come out here and force choke this bear for me. We'll add it to the pile. You're not... Okay, yeah, I was going to say, you're not like one of the bears from before that just happened to not die for whatever reason. I don't know where you came from. Or how you got so close to our base without us noticing. If he does go hostile, um... Oh, these are turned off. Never mind. Mara's been calmed down by Pathfinder. Cool. Pathfinder is making himself very useful. Um, also, we have this built, but uh, it's going to take them a while to wire it, so we won't be seeing the benefit from that immediately. And some people have suggested upgrading to more of the advanced stuff. I would like to, but it is very costly components-wise to do that. And not only... Is it costly components wise but it it takes the more advanced version of the components the energized ones so it's it's a big resource investment and i i did this one because it was fairly close to the base and protected the more obscure or more remote i guess is a better word the more remote um generators are going to be harder to do and then of course we could upgrade the solar generators but for now, I think just having a block of the regular ones is going to be more than enough. We're recovering on our power. We have plenty at this point. But I do want to remove these, and so we will need to make up for that eventually. I might need to remove some of these too. I just don't want too much stuff near our front door. But anyways, Heth, uh, come on down here. And again, force choke the bear. I'm sorry, bear, but you're too close to our base. And I'm not about to try to capture it at this point. Did you do it? Why didn't you do it? Huh. I should have maybe grabbed somebody else just because his lightsaber lags the game so bad. Boom. Okay. So it stunned him. Um, he is choking. His neck has been crushed. Angles, you picked a very bad time to uh, wander out here. Uh, do a force lightning as well. Okay. Is it dead? Yeah, it's dead. Alright. Uh, undraft. Haul that polar bear for me and Heth, go back to hanging out or whatever you're doing. Cool. And that'll be a little bit more food for us. Not that we needed it, obviously. And... Let's see, group of travelers. They do not have anybody to trade with, so I'm just going to ignore them. Uh, let's see. It's like everybody but Salt has recovered, or at least everybody that was up there. 51, 65, hopefully that catches up. And, okay, this needs to get changed. So this was... I almost called her Zarena. Um, Zash's bed. Zash, there you go. There's your bed back. And shoot, who was here? Oh, no. Yeah, that's the problem with this, is now I've forgotten who was where. Uh, I think this was Lynn's bed. Possibly. 
No, Lynn's over there. Lynn should be in here, though. So I'll move Lynn into there. That's unowned, so somebody will have that. I don't know who else needs a bed still. I don't have to go through all the names. Angles, you have a bed. I'm just going to mark these as unowned. I wish there was a way to sort this by people who weren't assigned beds. Because obviously most of these people do have a bed, so it'd be nice if it separated the ones that didn't. But I guess, yeah, I'll just leave them unowned and I assume they'd be smart. I mean, I probably shouldn't assume that, but I would hope that they were smart enough to go, you know, pick a bed. And I don't really care where they end up. I just want them to have beds again. I'm trying to think. Keel, you were sleeping in there. You have a bed. Corona. I don't see your name anymore. Yeah, maybe she needs a bed. Well, she'll pick one, I'm sure. I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay. So, let's see here. I wonder if wiring it into there would be better. That is something that we could do. I might, I might wall this off and expand this little freezer area a bit. I'd have to get rid of the vent and move some things around. But we could expand this space and then by, you know, adding more walls in here I can start running conduits through it and at least that would give us some redundancy. So that, you know, if something happened... Bandit camp opportunity, they'll pay us in silver. Um, let's take a look at it. I'm sort of reluctant to do away missions in this playthrough just because they take so long. I did have, or I did plan to add a um, aircraft mod, and I still do plan to do that. I just haven't had time to do the stuff with it that I want to do it before I introduce it because of all the stuff I'm doing with the 40k playthrough and other uh, Let's Plays I'm trying to set up. So, yeah. This will never go away. Oh man, that's like a week just to get there. But yeah, that won't go anywhere. So we have essentially forever to do it same with this and this yeah those those don't disappear it's only the item stuff that ever disappears okay but yeah so in the event that something happened along this part of the grid we would still have this generator you know r routing power in there and then you know whatever got cut off like if this exploded all of these would be disconnected but if this was connected over here then they could just route power that way so it's always good to have backups like that. Also, I'm sort of planning up here as we go along. That's where we struck the jade. And these, of course, are going to be the hydroponics rooms that our prisoners are going to operate once we start getting more of them. <laughs> but I was thinking, rather than doing the exact same layout that we have down here, I might only do like three-fourths and then reserve a corner for some crafting benches. And so I could have, say, one room dedicated to uh, Neutromine and Herbal Medicine, and then in that room in like the bottom right corner, I could have the uh, drug production bench, or maybe even two of them, so that people in that room could be turning those things into medicine right there. Uh, also some shelves so that it can be stored locally and not have to get shoveled back and forth for the crafting. Or, you know, where we have like the smoke leaf and the spectigo, you know, we could have a place to make the smoke leaf joints and the spectigo tea right there. And so I think, uh, even though we had discussed making this sort of our commodity planting area, I think a lot of that's actually gonna shift up to here and we're gonna try to use prison labor to get most of that done. Uh, what were you doing? Were you just, like, laying down on the floor? That was weird. Okay. I don't... Yeah, I don't think she has a bed either. If she does, I don't see it. So, I'll assign her this one. And 
whoever is missing a bed can sleep there if they're smart enough to do that. Salt, how are you doing? Slowly catching up. Very slowly catching up, but I think she'll be all right. Uh, I've also gone ahead and I've queued up some filing cabinets right here. They do boost our research speed slightly. This one is just cosmetic, but I put it in there anyway, and it does give a 5% bonus. So I figured I'd put two in here, and that would give us a 10% bonus. Uh, well, I don't know if they add necessarily. I don't know if it's directly additive or if it's like a 5% and then the next one takes 5% on top of that, or if it's just a flat 10. No idea. Um, it would be very similar in effect, but slightly different, depending on which way it worked. Okay. Let's see. I can't set that to Mara, but I'm sure she'll pick a bed. And we're clearing this out. Let's go ahead and start walling this off. Like so. I'm actually going to airlock this as well, because I don't like the idea of the prisoners being able to directly access this hallway through a single door. So this room is going to have a doorway right here. That'll be the, the door that goes into this hydroponics room. So as long as the wall is like here, something like this with another steel door in there, we can at least have a double layer of protection. Oh, great. Psychic drone. And I think that will be very useful. Uh, we can potentially put a stronger door there as well. I don't know if I'm running the... No, I think I am. I think I, I think we just need to research it. Hold on, let's pause. Uh, I think it is just a research project. Yeah, prisoner containment. So this just adds a jail door, which is like a really, really heavy barred door. It's not necessarily better than other doors, it's just more durable. And so I think that would make a good inner layer door. And then obviously this one is more just for convenience sake. Uh, they'd have to break through this first, and so I think that would work out just fine. But again, two layers of protection rather than one, because this is going to remain blocked off. This is going to get mined out, and I guess I could do that now. Mar is the only prisoner, so I'm not too concerned with like prison breaks. But this is just going to be open, although I think I will put a 1x2 door in there. We do have those in this playthrough, right? Uh, I had it open already. Uh, yeah, we have the, the 1x2s and 1x3s. So I'll put a 1x2 steel door there, or marble door, whatever, and just have it held open. But if anything, you know, like a prison break goes down, we can close it off and at least have a little bit more control about or over what's going on here. Another hydroponics basic breaking down. Those things are constantly falling apart on us, and that is, I think, where a lot of our components are going, which is a real shame, but can't be helped. Can't be helped, although eventually, I mean, I don't think there's really any way for us to do this without extensive, extensive work uh, making greenhouses rather than hydroponics rooms. Because if we could just grow on tilled soil, we'd actually have the same growth rate with more effective terrain, because then we wouldn't need... Uh, in, I mean, technically you can just throw down hydroponics basins everywhere and people can walk across them, but... Uh, from a roleplay perspective, I don't like that. That's why we have um, every, well, at least one side of every table accessible. Technically, you don't need that. But um, with the tilled soil, obviously, you can just cover the whole ground and people can walk across it. And then you don't have to worry about the usual drawbacks of hydroponics basins, like you know losing power and stuff dying. It's just that we don't have really any usable soil. We were lucky to get even this for the trees. But we would essentially be doing this just with other plants. I'm just not sure if it's even the realistic goal. Because it would require a lot of terraforming. And I initially did have a mod that allowed me to create soil. But it kind of messed with other crafting recipes. And that's why I stopped using it. I don't recall if I ever... Yeah, I think we did have it at the beginning of this playthrough. But it, it just became too much of a problem because it made hydroponics basins significantly harder to craft uh, and a few other things that I didn't like. 
and so that that trade-off wasn't worth it to me but if there was a mod that did what that one did without the additional stuff i would probably go for it because it essentially allowed you allowed you to take organic matter uh and mulch it and then use the mulch to make like fertilizer that you could lie down or lay down over um, any terrain you wanted and turn it into fertile soil so that was really cool it would have been very helpful but in this case uh, I just I don't know that there's a mod that does it the way I want it huh and then somebody was also asking about fish and that is something I want to do so it's under production I believe yeah it's the aquaculture basin we would need more steel to do it, and it is a pretty big component investment, given where we're at right now. But I would like to do it. And what this does it is it allows us to basically feed rice into a machine that gets powered, and it outputs fish. So basically the fish are being you know, grown there. It's like a fish farm. But you put in energy and some sort of food source, and you get out... Uh, a meat food source, which would be really helpful for us because then we can start uh, splitting the rice with a bit of that into some fine meals rather than just cranking out rice into uh, simple meals all the time. So our people would be happier and it would make our rice last longer, which really isn't an issue as you can see. Uh, I've been trying to sell it whenever I can. There's just so much of it. But uh, it's better than goddamn solar flares. Well, we're going to lose another entire crop here. Oh well. That's why we keep so much. Because then when this happens and we lose harvest, it really doesn't hurt us. The The real kicker is the cotton. Because we need cotton, or, you know, the cloth, so, so badly. And it seems like every time we get close to a harvest, uh, our power gets shut off and it gets killed. So we can't seem to win there, but... You know, it is what it is. How are these coming? Um, okay, just it's taking them a while to haul this stuff out there, which fair enough. Fair enough. I, I wish there was an easier way for them to get out there, but I don't want... Yeah, I don't want to make more entry points into my base. Ideally, I want to get rid of this as well and just make that walled off and have everything come through here but in terms of working outside that's not very practical because you know this is our warehouse so if they're going to be building anything the resources are coming from here eventually and i've mentioned this several times but i do want to sort of incorporate all of this into the base and so we might have other access points later this still being the main one especially as you know guests and stuff are concerned but have maybe a secondary one back here or maybe here or something so that we can come and go a little bit more efficiently depending on what we need to do may what are you doing outside that's weird why would she ever go outside huh i have no idea I mean, it, it's good that she go outside every once in a while, just because she is very susceptible to, uh, like, cabin fever. Cabin, cabin fever. There we go. Because all she does is sit and research all the time. So it is good for her to get out once in a while, but I do worry, you know, like, polar bears pop up out of nowhere. And she's not wearing any armor. So she would be polar bear food pretty quickly. And obviously, she is very important to our operation here. She's our... Our top surgeon, our, our top researcher, um, kind of pioneering all of our uh, our research that's getting done in terms of the super soldier stuff. So we need her, and we don't want to lose her to a, a random wild animal attack. I'm curious, how are our animals doing? So let's see. Stella hasn't been rescue trained yet. I haven't checked these in forever. I don't think any of them are bonded. Salt has a major break risk. She's getting treated by Karan right now. So she's, the plague's up to 71, but immunity's up to 63. It looks like the gap is closing. It was greater than 10% before, and it's only 8% now. It just needs to continue at that rate. Okay, so 
tending is going to be pretty damn good. I think she'll be alright, but it's going to be a lot closer than I would have liked. Everybody else is fine, though. Uh, Deleuze is back in action. What did that get to? It says 62. It was higher than that, though. Huh. Solar Flare's ending. I'm pretty sure we lost all our crops. Yeah, we did. Real bummer. So, again, that's why you would want... Um, that's why you would want... Uh, shoot. Uh, greenhouses rather than hydroponics rooms. For that exact reason, but we can't help that right now, so it is what it is. But in terms of the fish, like I was discussing before, I think I want to do that up here. Because I don't even know what I would do with four hydroponics rooms up here. And so I might make one of them like a... What, what were these called again? Like, what was the proper name? An aquaculture room with like four aquaculture basins. I think we can fit four in there. Yeah, they're three by three, so we could actually do more than that. The problem is they can't be rotated. For whatever reason, this mod just won't let you rotate objects. Otherwise, we could fit even more than that. We could do like six. Actually, we could do like seven. Because we could have one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one here. Well, no, we couldn't because this one wouldn't be accessible. But yeah, the, the problem is I can't rotate them, so the bottom left square there needs to be accessible. So I think we'll have to do here and here, and then not quite all the way down in the corner there. So yeah, I think we'll only be able to get maybe four in there. Actually, no, we could we could do like five or something. We'll play with it. Once they're mined out, it'll be easier to kind of figure it out. So I don't know if I want to have one wide doors or make these a little bit bigger. But for now, we'll just assume one wide doors and bring that all the way down. Um, that is going to need to get mined out just a little bit further. So we'll take this hallway to at least there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll bring it out there. I'm actually going to bring it all the way to here. And I'll do what I've done to cap off some of these other hallways where I'll kind of in, inset a heater or something just so there's a little bit more heat being created there hopefully we can get this stuff replanted today it's not going to affect us too much but obviously if we neglect it for too long it could become a problem uh Deleuze, this is your bed so where did you go yeah that's going to be your bed there's at least two maybe there isn't two people missing beds i don't know corona was missing a bed but she's obviously taken that one so, I don't know who else is without a bed. Jade's got one. Boss, you clearly have one. Marks is here. Marks, who are, who are you with? You and Lynn broke up, that's right. So you're in this room by yourself. I'm going to ignore that for now, but I'm not going to keep it that way. I should move him into a single room. Uh, Yevra, you're with Kenta. Kamara, that's you right there. Salt has her bed. Um, let's see. Ox, you're over here. Keel, you're down there. Mordant, you're sleeping right in front of us. We've seen Zash. Togrul is here. Deleuze, we just fixed. Kepin is in here somewhere as well. Yeah. Maris is with Togrul. Karin, you just claimed that one. Marks, we just saw yours. Boss, we just saw you. Jade. Angles. Liam, sleeping here. And Pathfinder is there. So everybody has a bed. We just have extras, I guess. That's fine. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I remember having a couple of extras now, so that makes sense. And hopefully we can get this filled out soon. I'm also going to go ahead and tell them to... Did I not get that one? I wanted all those. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have them start. Let's do this room because there's um, compacted machinery in there and we could use it. But eventually these will all be mined out. And we'll have to figure out what we want to put in them. Um, I've sort of already hit on some of them. It'll be... I don't know if... I mean, cotton wouldn't be a terrible idea. But I want to do more commodity stuff, and the cotton stuff, while it could be a commodity, 
is going to be mostly put toward making the, the body suits and the uniforms for us before anything else. Although we could just crank out a ton of body suits and sell the extras, that is an option. So we'll just have to kind of see what we want to do there. And obviously we'll need to do the medical supplies in one of them. I'll probably phase out this because I think half of this one is heal root and neutromine. Yeah, so that will probably just get turned all into food and we'll move that up into its own hydroponics room where we'll do 50-50 and that'll obviously produce more that we can turn into medicine and we'll sell the excess uh, we'll sell the excess medicine because that'll sell for more than the raw product uh, smoke leaf, spectigo, you know the usual stuff, actually let's kinda look through our options we'll just use this one okay so Rice, potatoes, strawberries. I wouldn't mind actually maybe starting to grow some strawberries just as an additional food source. And we'll ex maybe exclude them from meals so people can just kind of eat them raw as a treat. Obviously there's cotton, heel root, hop plants. Uh, so we can start making beer. That's something that we've put off for a while. So that is something that we could do. Psychoid. Yeah, so there's a couple things that we could do. I think we'll have a, a like a smoke leaf and spectigo room, or maybe we'll do like spectigo and hops together since those will both be turned into drinks, and then we could do um, smoke leaf and psychoid. I don't remember what recipes we have available for psychoid. I know that there's a couple that are researchable, and let's see go juice. I'd like to start making paradigm, but I don't. I don't remember what that requires. We should probably look at our, our drugs bench or whatever it's called, drug lab. So neutromine medicine, panoxycycline gives you like immunity. It takes two neutromine. So this this boosts your immunity um, against diseases. So not really relevant here on this frozen planet, but in like jungles and stuff where malaria is really prevalent you basically need that stuff so we can kind of ignore it but paradigm is something I want to do it's gonna be two neutromine and two rainbow petals so the site or not the cycloid the spectigo would go toward that as well but that's definitely something that would be worthwhile because paradigm is a painkiller and one that doesn't lower consciousness which uh, is the issue with like smoke leaf joints is that you can actually kill people with them if their consciousness is too low and you give them one. They'll just kind of like go to sleep and never wake up. Whereas with that, you can give it to people with low consciousness and they, you know, will be fine. And it'll actually help with their pain too. Okay, so we're down to 3% difference. It looks like she'll be A-OK. -okay. As long as she continues to get treated on time in good quality, um, she'll be perfectly OK. And that's good. Let's see, do we ever queue this up? I don't remember, cause, let's see. I don't, yeah, did we ever make the hybrid implants? I would assume not. No, because the recipe would still be here. So, let's see, extract genes from humanoids, alpha serum from bear, nobody's doing that. There was humanoids on the map. Where did those corpses end up? Huh, can I force somebody to do that? Like if I told May, you know, I'd rather you not do it. Um, I could make like Kepin do it. Kepin's pretty decent at medicine. So Kepin, I'm gonna tell you to do that. And let's trace your path. Perfect, okay, so he's gonna get that done. I don't know where the other corpses ended up, but that's good enough. At least we'll have a little bit. I don't know what the human ones will do for us, but again, what I mentioned earlier, uh, if we've come across any force-sensitive human corpses, then we will kind of use that to our advantage. Textiles trader. I don't have a lot of textiles. 
I also don't have an orbital trade beacon in this area. Hmm. I'm still going to send somebody to do that. Heth, what are you working on right now? Oh, you're mining out that room for me? Okay. Um, Kenta, what are you doing? Well, you're a lot closer, so let's send you to call them. And we will see what they've got. I, I really just want Hyperweave, so... That's all I'm concerned about. I, I don't know why, but I remember building a trade beacon in here. Like a temporary one, but apparently we did not. Okay, well, is there anything they're willing to buy from me? Just some clothes and whatnot. Uh, I'll happily sell you that armor. Yeah, um, actually, don't sell anything Hyperweave, because we might be able to recycle that. But everything else, get rid of. And let's see, that's only 124, it's not a lot. Did they have Hyperweave? They did. It is very expensive. It's the only thing they don't have a good price on. Huh. If we bought all of it, it'd be over 4,000. Jeez. Let's see. How many pieces can I get? Um. Like, I don't think we'll be able to buy it in a quantity that would be worthwhile until we have more silver, so I think we're just going to have to hold off on that. I really wish they were open to more purchases. Or, I mean, like, we had more to sell them, because we, we do have some scraps here and there, but it's not going to make any difference on this. So, we'll just take that little bit of silver, I guess. There are some other clothing items lying around in the bases, but it wouldn't have made a significant difference. Like, I think there, there's like some robes somewhere, there's like a, an armored vest, they won't even buy the armored vest, so that doesn't matter. But yeah, there's some clothes here and there that haven't made it into the trade area yet, but again, it's, it's negligible what that would do for us. Uh, Heth, you're going to get walled in. I'm going to go ahead and forbid that just so you don't get trapped in here. And then what I meant to do over here was something like this. Yeah, something like that. Wait. This needs to get mined out. So that doesn't need to be there, or does it? I don't know. Mine those just to be safe and you know, put that back. I meant to do this. Something to that effect anyway. And then we'll have a door here. Heth, have you leveled up yet? No. He's been doing a lot of mining, so I thought he might have, but apparently he is not. And that got put in, that's good. We'll just have to eventually research the, uh, you know, barred prison door so that we can put it in there. I think they're fairly expensive too, so we'll have to see whether or not they're even viable. Okay. I think we're going to go ahead and end it here. We've gotten some decent progress done. Obviously nothing uh, groundbreaking, but... We're taking care of the little things that we need to do. It would be really nice if these got finished soon. It, it takes them forever because they haul very little time. And I keep forgetting to add that mod uh, that we have in the other playthroughs where they can use their inventories to haul. That would be nice. Um, also, I don't remember if I added the mending mod to this one or not. But that's something we'll need to do as well because that's how we're going to be able to recycle this hyperweave. Um, let's see. That's not anything... Well, I mean, that is something worthwhile, but not right now. Still need to figure out what's going to go here. It's probably just going to end up being more food as we expand. Because eventually we are going to need to obviously produce more food to keep up with everybody we have here. And... Yeah. I think that's about it. Another thought I actually just had is... We could put in an aquaculture room over here or something. It doesn't necessarily have to be up there. I think they're pretty hands-off, so I don't think we would need to put them up here where a prisoner would have to actively work it. I think it would be um, pretty passive. 
So we could turn like this into an aquaculture room or something uh, and have access points from the hallway maybe. I, I don't know. Anyways, it's a thought for later. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some RimWorld with you and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.